couple of months ago. So, um, as Donna had said earlier, you know, we were kind of going probably just to receive. I was kind of going to receive, you know, because I'm, I'm like, I don't know, I've never been in that that atmosphere totally. So, as we're um, the first night, we're just worshiping and worshiping and worshiping and listening to the word and. And the, and the ministry, uh, Heidi Baker actually ministered that night. And we just kind of received, and there was some prayer, and awesome. That was just awesome. Um, the next night, no, the next morning, during the morning, um, we were there an hour early because the doors, they don't open until 9. So we were there at 8 o'clock because you've got to get there early to kind of be able to even get a seat or you're in the overflow. So Dawn is... Um, giving her testimony and Jada's testimony of um, their miraculous um, deliverance, her deliverance, and the things that she went through. Tell her your story. <laughs> um, and I had stepped away for a minute and and came back, and Dawn has given the testimony. Yeah, so these two ladies, I'm, you know, just making open just conversation. We had no idea. We're just hanging out. And I just started telling them about what happened to me, what happened to my daughter. Told them about the loft. And one of these ladies is from Marion, and the other's from Cape. And they had both heard of the loft and wanting to come. So I got to share that with them. And before I knew it, I was preaching to them about their identity because that is just what has changed my whole life. And woo! I'm going to take a little rabbit trail just for a minute and just honor the leaders here. Josh, Carl, Steph, Dan, Lydia, the way they ported us yeah. and taught us our identity. Yeah. I love you guys so much because this has been life-changing for me, for my family, because that is the key. That's the key to changing the world is knowing who we are. So Kathy had stepped away for a minute, and I ended up preaching to these ladies, and I'm just, the Holy Spirit is just on me. It's so exciting. And then Kathy comes back, and then... <laughs> okay, so one of the ladies, I mean, these ladies are, they're like excited. They're like, oh, wow, that is just awesome. We want to experience that. We want that. And I'm like, okay, well, let's just pray, because you know what? We don't have to wait until, because I think they said they were going to come here. We don't have to wait till we go inside the... The ministry um, session, you know. So we just started praying for these two ladies here, and the one lady that said, "Well, I want that." We just, you know, we just prayed for her, and she just starts just laughing and just just feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is real. Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit is not a thing. It's not just something that we talk about, but a person with with yes. with life, and so you can. Feel just like I can feel Donna. Holy Spirit is real, mm -hmm. and so she was just getting touched. And Donna's praying for the lady next to her. Oh yeah, and she just—I mean, immediately I put my hands on her. Immediately she just starts trembling. I mean, this this woman was hungry for God. She just started trembling and just laughing and stumbling around. I'm like we're waiting in line on a sidewalk to get into a conference and we're having Holy Spirit bust out, right? It was awesome, guys. It was awesome. And then Kathy. <laughs> there, there was an elderly lady next to us and her husband behind us in line just kind of witnessing these two ladies getting touched by God. And so I just turned around and started praying for this lady and the Holy Spirit just fell on her. Elderly. I mean, she's probably, I don't know how old she was, because I, I don't ask age, because you know what? You don't ask women their age. But she was, she was, I would guess, in her 80s. The Holy Spirit just fell on her, and she starts laughing, and she's praying in the Spirit. And Holy Spirit, I mean, we're on a sidewalk outside, and he just gently lowered her. Holy Spirit just gently lowered her to, to the ground, and she's just getting filled, getting filled. And then she get after her a little bit, she gets up, and she's like, I guess we're ready to go home now. <laughs> She's like, we had church. You know what? That's what Holy Spirit does. Amen. He touches you, man. He touches you. <laughs> and then we started, we just saw everybody that was kind of just there. We all just kind of gathered. And we just started praying and worshiping God and just telling him God how good he is. Because, you know, that's what he wants. He wants us to worship him and praise him. We're all in a circle. And this young girl kind of steps in the middle of this circle and she's like, yeah, I want this. What's whatever's going on here? And we just we just started we we just started praying for her. We just just laid our hands on her, and she just 
she do? She just oh, started, she just, she felt the spirit and she's just felt it and she's down. This would be the picture, Josh. <sighs> that's, that's, that's the cross. <laughs> Sure, where they're from? Where they at? Nebraska. Uh, yeah. and, or I think her mom is, is somewhere there, but she was just just receiving, just just. And this and went on and on. Probably at, I don't know, 45 minutes or so, and we were just giving her words, and um, God had given me a word for. I just kept seeing spot on, and I I don't remember exactly what all I said, but I knew that her destiny was she was going to be giving some spot on words of knowledge for people that were spot on. God was just telling her everything was spot on and they just, yeah, she was like, yeah, that was so true. She's like a hairdresser and she had been giving some words of knowledge. Um, okay, well, so she just stood there just receiving. I mean, she was getting wrecked. She was just shaking and trembling. And like Kathy said, we they open the doors and people are just people are just walking by us. Yeah, and people are like, get them, Lord, get them, Lord, as they walk by, you know, and... And, uh, but we just continued to, I mean, as long as Holy Spirit's working on somebody, I'm not leaving them, man. I'll just keep praying into them. And she's just ah. shaking and receiving. And this went on at least half an hour. The whole thing went by from the time we first started praying with the women to the time we got up. It was, it was over an hour because that's just the holy, I mean, it was awesome. And I'm like, man, this conference is just beginning and this is happening I'm on the sidewalk. This is so awesome. And then, um, I think maybe you went in and then I, I ended up, we had to go to the restroom, me and the girl in yellow, and we, the Holy Spirit is just all over us. I'm just, I'm just shaking just because under his power, and I get into this building where the restrooms are, and this lady looks at me, she says, are you okay? Can I help you? I'm like, no, we're okay. We've just been praying. We've been in his presence. So we get into the, into the restroom, and there was a, a lady there that had, uh, it was like a walker, and there was um, a younger lady that was assisting her, and she was, I don't know what had happened to her, I don't know what was going on with her, but I, she was just, her, it's like every step was just labor, just be laboring every single step. It took her so long just to take a single step. And I'm sitting in, in, in the stall, like a couple stalls down. I'm like, this is not going down. This is not happening because Holy Spirit had just, you know. And I told the girl in yellow, I said, okay, I said, you got the fire in you. I said, we're praying for this lady. So she's like, all right, all right. So we had to wait quite a long time for her to, to come out, wash her hands and come out. And we asked her if she wanted prayer, and she agreed. And, and so we just laid hands on her, and just like the Holy Spirit just came up on her, and she just started sh just shaking and trembling. And we just we just rebuked the infirmity on her and, and just commanded all pain to leave. And we pray, prayed for her feet, her knees, her head. We just prayed head to toe. We prayed for this lady. And when we were done praying, and this went on for like 20 minutes. This is at, right there in the restroom doorway. And... This is not what I'd expected when I went to this conference, you know, because it already started. But um, when we were finished praying, she was, the girl was still holding her, but she was walking. Oh, much better. It's like it was taking her, before it was like taking forever just to take one step, and she was walking. And so I just stayed behind her, just praying, just praying behind her, though, every step. I was just praying behind her, so. Um, trying to remember if we could get something. That's okay. I wrote some stuff down. We don't usually, usually we, take notes, but so much happened, we thought we'd forget something. We kind of separated during the, we normally would kind of set up front, um, but we separated kind of after that because she really didn't know where she was at. So I was sitting back with some other friends of mine that had went. And during worship, this is something that I experienced that I had never experienced before, but I'm like, I believe it because I know, I mean, I just know my daughter has. And I'm like, during worship, I had my eyes closed and... Heard, like, that was just beautiful singing. I'm like, that's just beautiful. I'm like, that sounds like angels. <laughs> and so then it lasted probably maybe 15, 20 seconds or so. And and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I, I opened up my eyes and I'm like, well, there, I'm like, those, I thought, I thought those women sounded beautiful, but there were no women on the stage. And this was not coming from the, <laughs> the, conference people it was coming from the stage area it was just beautiful just beautiful so like, that was the experience that I had never experienced before so, but so come on now let's press into that you know we just have to open up ourselves to the to the things of the spirit because it's it's real man heaven is real and it's right here it's not up some some place in the sky it's right here man it's right here so open up your spirit and just 
open up your spiritual ears. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Um, okay, well, there were other things Thanks. that happened along yeah. the way. We prayed for people during worship, and it, yes. it, it came really clear to us really very fast that we were not there to receive. We were, we were there, there to receive. give. Yeah. And we, as you give, Holy Spirit will just pour into you and as you, there's nothing better it's so much better that that's the paradox of god yes. it's like when you give yeah. that's that's what feeds you it's like by feeding others you feed yourself and it's like so then it's like okay game on we're going to be yeah. finding people to pray for we're praying for people during worship and then the next morning we're waiting in line again it's like man what's going to happen today god this is a crazy but you just never know it's like open mind so uh we just again i shared there, was a, there were a couple of young girls in line with, with their mothers, and one was there with her aunt. And one in particular, I was looking at her, and I thought, man, I'm going to share it. My daughter, Jada, her testimony is oh, amazing. And again, I started sharing what God had done for her, because I was looking at this girl, and I thought, you know, I wonder if she had struggled with any of the stuff that Jada had struggled with. And I, I looked at her, and I thought, no, I don't know, maybe not. But I just felt led to share Jada's testimony with her. And after I did, she... Uh, she told me, she said, I'm so glad that you shared this stuff. And she had encountered God, and God had delivered her. But it was there was so much that Jada had gone through, that she had gone through the same thing. And she was actually still living with her aunt uh, to kind of get away from, you know, where she had grown up. And so I just, it just kind of sewed into her and um, just kind of just taught her more about her identity, who she was. You know, be careful who you form your friendships with, you know, because you want to, you know, run with people who are after Jesus, you know, so, so, you know, not, not everything is dramatic, but it's like, sometimes we plant, sometimes we water, but it's all, it's all always important. Right. So that, yes. was, that was Saturday yes. night before we went in. I had to pray for a lady, or not a lady, a guy in the elevator at the hotel, he was having, um, uh, he had broke his shoulder blade and had his arm in a sling, wasn't really having a pain, but having difficulty moving his arm, so he was able to move it more, not completely, but more. Um, yes, yeah, so that was, and so Saturday, was Saturday, Saturday um, during worship, kind of towards the end of the worship service, there was a lady that was next to us, um, that ended up down on the floor. I'm not sure how she ended up down there, but we were we started ministering to her. Her friend had told us. Her friend had told us that she had lost the ability to tear. That she that she could not. She didn't have natural tears, and she was asking us to pray for her eyes. So she's on the floor. So we both just began praying for her. Um, um, and both of us realized immediately that it was more of an emotional issue um, and some just demonic oppression on her and so we just prayed for her um, you know healing and deliverance and she got delivered during that service yeah I mean, um, Heidi's up there speaking and this this lady's getting delivered of a demon right and it was it was not loud and, and uh, it was not it was not um, um, distracting but I mean like she was gnashing gnashing her teeth and and it's like we almost immediately you know before the demonic manifestations it's like we both like she said we felt led to more pray over the heart stuff it's like let's go, let's go for the heart first because you know the physical stuff will follow and she very quickly started manifesting just gnashing her teeth and so Heidi's up here talking this is another thing man the freedom there was incredible it was like being at the loft this is a conference, but it was not formal. Um, Heidi's up there speaking. We're down here. This lady's getting delivered of a demon while, while Heidi's up there speaking. We're, we're right by the platform because people come and sit on the platform and just sit there and watch her kind of listen to her. So this is going on. So so we just ministered to her like just that entire time and just... Holy Spirit was ministering to her, um, and then Holy, and she got once she got delivered and um, that, that emotional healing. Um, Holy Spirit just started feeling her, and she's just, just vibrating under the Spirit just during that the entire service. I mean, she was just down, just shaking, and when she, when she came to, she was just like you, you could see the countenance change on her her face. She was just glowing. And during the ministry time that we were ministering to her, I mean, I had my face down there because I'm down there with him, man. I'm going to get right down there with him. I'm not going to be, 
you know, God bless you, God bless you. I'm, I'm right there, I'm right there with him, man. But I had my face up against her like this. And I had to wipe tears from my, off of my face that were coming from her face, yes. eyes. We were praying for her because she couldn't, she didn't have any tears. She Whoa. had no tears. So, I mean, you know, you get that emotional healing and that deliverance. The, the physical healing comes. So that woman got, got changed, just changed. She's not going to be the same. Amen. Um, also, this was during the this was during the uh, afternoon, and this was the same afternoon session where he had everybody raise their hand. But uh, before he started, that was like the end of that afternoon session. But at the beginning, um, at this point, we'd actually taken our seats because we'd been sitting in the floor for a day and a half. And when you're in your mid forties, that kind of has an effect on you that it didn't have. You know, you've been used to just sitting the floor all day long. But we were ready for a chair, so we were back there sitting. And and he said, "Okay, I want everybody to start praying for their neighbor." So, and then, so we, you know, there was a couple to my left, it was a man and his wife, and so I just laid hands on this man and started praying for him. He said, okay, now prophesy over him. That's stretching me a little bit, like, prophesy on demand, really? He's like, well, just pray and prophesy, and I'm, I'm getting nothing. I'm praying for this man, I'm praying in the Spirit, but I'm getting nothing. And I thought, I thought, God, if you don't show me anything, I'm not going to say anything, because I don't want it to be me. I'm not about, I don't want to be fake, you know, but it's, um... It's like, you know, God, if there's anything you want to show me, I'm open. And so, I don't know, he had us pray for, you know, a couple or three minutes. And toward the end, right toward the end, I saw a picture in my mind. It's like God will speak to us in, in so many different ways. And as I was praying for this man, I saw a picture. And I saw, like, a person walking and several people walking behind them. And I thought, this guy's got some, some sort of leadership on him. So I, I, I spoke that over. More of, I guess, maybe more of a word of knowledge than prophecy. I mean, either one. But, um, but I told him, I said, I see you walking and several people just walking right behind you. I said, I feel like you're, you're anointed for leadership. I feel like that's why God's showing that people are following you. And um, he said, this is the exact same word that I got from somebody earlier today. And he, uh, he's from, from Kansas City, and they had just started a church five months ago, a church on identity, <laughs> where they teach about identity. I'm like, yes. So, but, uh, and he was one of the administrators, one of the leaders of the church. So that was just God just confirming that. It was really, really cool. And, I mean, it's, it's not about us. It's just like we just step into him and just uh, what he shows us, just be bold enough to, to take a chance. That's the same girl from the picture earlier. That's just a oh. front view. That's her face. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's her yeah. from the side again. Yeah. 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 Um, we're not, I'm not very camera. Got one That's, I don't know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. Oh, well, um, yeah, Saturday night, the, towards the very end of the service, there were, um, during, the, they had an impartation <coughs> session, um, but people were just kind of packed up at the altar area, and we were just praying for people, and Donna can tell you about the couple that she prayed for, but there were some, a lady next to me that we had prayed for, um, you'll probably have to tell exactly everything she was, the homeless well, she, Oh, she had been, like, her husband had been into satanic, it was, it was, it was uh, demonic stuff, and her yeah, husband had been into Satan worship, and, and we're like, okay, man, we're, we're, we're heading into some uh, heavy territory here, because it's like, you know, almost like when you know that someone's got a background, like with the occult, or witchcraft, or Satanism, it's like it might strike fear in your heart, but at this point, we were so pumped, I mean, it doesn't matter, because every demon in hell, you stack them all up, one drop of blood of Jesus, and it's gone. It's eradicated. So we started praying for her. Well, she got delivered, and she got healed. I mean, I, it, I, I, I'm just going to keep it short, man, you know, because it, God is good. You know, that's, 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 that's the answer. Jesus is the answer. So we just prayed, um, her, prayed with her about her identity, and, and we just prayed for her and prayed deliverance over her. And it was not just crazy demonic stuff, but... She was touched. She was touched and, and delivered. And then the lady next to her was a friend of hers. And they were both homeless. I don't know how long they had been there, but they were staying in a shelter across the street from this church. 
So we just loved on him, man. We just loved on him. We hugged him and prayed for him. And they were just like, oh my gosh, God sent you guys here. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, that's, that's, that's the love of Jesus. We just need to, to love on people. That's, that's all this is. We are nothing special. Jesus is on the inside of us. Right. Yeah. And he just wants to get out. So Woo! we just have to reach out to people. We just have to reach out to him. We can't keep it bottled up. And the words of knowledge have really started increasing, and that—that that is just really something that I've really been praying for. And nothing, nothing about me, but I just—that if you can give somebody a word of knowledge that only God knows, that's like a key that unlocks their heart. Mm -hmm. And during worship, there was, and, and you know, just be sensitive to God. It's like if you're drawn to a person, if there's something about them that God is showing, something that's touching your heart, and you just feel like going to pray for them, it's for a reason. Uh, so go up and pray for him. There was just one young man in particular. He was just, and I saw that he was praying, you know, for people, and and he was just so full of joy. Um, he just bubbled up inside. I could just tell that the, that he just had a heart after God. And this is during worship, and I thought, man, I'm gonna go pray for this guy. So I just walked up to him and said, I just want to pray for you, and just laid hands on him. And I'm telling you, Holy Spirit, fire hit this guy. He hit the deck and just started. I mean convulsing but it was not demonic it was holy spirit i mean he was he was just shaking just under the power and under the fire and and um as i was praying for him god showed me a picture of him standing on a mat and i shared it with him i thought i'm gonna just gonna go with this and i then i'd say god's showing me i see you standing on a mountain and i said it's just you're you're there on top of this mountain alone with god and uh, you're up there, and I said, I feel like God is saying just to, just to get alone with him and spend more time with him, because there was a magnificent view on this mountain. I said, when you get alone with him, he's going to show you awesome and magnificent and, and mighty things. And this guy is just completely, I mean, he's like weeping, shaking, screaming. I mean, it was, it was intense. And then when that went on for a long, long time, when he stood, when he set up, he told me, he said, I go to a mountain to pray. Wow. And guys, that is a, that is this has been such a humbling thing for me. This is nothing to do with me. It's nothing to do with me. God used a donkey in the Bible to speak. Okay, it's nothing to do with me. Um, uh, real briefly, Reinhard Bonnke shared this uh, in his daily fire devotional about uh, how a fuse is a fuse is made with it's got metal in it because it has low resistance, and the lower the resistance, the more power is going to flow through it. And, uh, and it's just like the things of the Spirit. You know, um, if we resist, there's going to be less power. Yep. That's right. You know, the higher the resistance, the less power. But the lower the resistance, the more power. So it's like, let's not resist. So God used a donkey in the Bible. You know what? You think the donkey was willing? I don't necessarily think so. But the donkey didn't resist. The donkey did not know to resist. So I just, you know, God can speak through us if we'll just open up. Yes. And that, this stuff was just blowing me away. And then right after I was done praying for this man, this young girl just turns around and just hugged me. And I just started praying over her. And the Holy Spirit hit her and she went down. I just, the power of God was just uh, crazy at this, at this thing. And um, so I go down there, I'm praying for her. And I told her, I said, and I saw a picture of a white rose. I said, I see a picture of a white rose. And I said, white represents purity. God wants you to know that he sees you as pure. And a rose is beautiful and it's fragrant. And when she was able to talk, she said, I've been struggling with purity. I gave away my virginity two years ago. And I've had people tell me to take off my purity ring. And I've really, really struggled with that. And just like God just touched her heart so much. And then at, um, at the end, and then I just want to share about Will Hart. I mean, this, this man, yeah, he, he carries the anointing. Um, people were just flat when it came time because he was laying hands on people. And it's like people were just like running up there. And he had to tell people, no more people on the stage. Someone's going to get hurt. And all these people were just trying to get to him, trying to get to him. Trying, and we didn't, we didn't have a desire to go up there and let him lay his hand, hands on us. No, I mean, because you know why? Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, fire is in us. We don't need we don't need to go to a man and let him lay his hands on. You know, we don't, you know, and Heidi Baker is wonderful, but she's she's a person. You know, we have somebody more famous than Heidi Baker living in us, guys. We we got his power. So but these people were just like packed. I mean, it was I couldn't move and I and I used to struggle with claustrophobia. Maybe I need deliverance, just joking. <laughs> But, I mean, all these people were packed around, and I, I started feeling, oh, my gosh. And I, I told her, I said, I feel like I need to move, but I couldn't. 
And I thought, forget it, I'm just going to start praying for people. So we just started laying hands on people because <laughs> not everybody can make it to the stage. And that's how we ended up praying for the homeless ladies. And then after it finally was starting to wind down, this is the last night, you know, almost over, uh, people were starting, there was room to move. And there had been a little, uh, just a little young couple there. They looked to be in their 20s. And I'd seen them consistently over the past couple days because they, they would come and sit on the floor up by the stage near, and I noticed them. And it's just like, I just was just watching them and just kind of had a tender heart toward them. But I would see them every day. And then there at the end, it was almost over, and I saw the, the young wife just sitting there worshiping, I thought, and I saw, and I, I thought it's her, I thought, I've got to go pray for this girl. Because I kept seeing her, and my heart was just moved. And see, that's another thing, being sensitive to God. So I, I walked, I said, can I pray with you? And she said, oh yes, please do. So I started praying over her. And when I did, God showed me a picture. I, showed, I told her what God was showing me. I said, God is showing me you standing in the middle of a room and there were a bunch of little kids sitting around you in a circle like a classroom. And I, I, I think I'd seen that same picture over, where's Megan? Is Megan here? Megan Carlock? I thought I'd seen, oh, I think I'd seen that same, it was like, you know, God will show you things. And, and I said, I said, are you called to, I said, I feel like you're called to teach little kids. And she just started weeping. And she told me, not, not only has God called me to teach, but I have such a love just for little kids. And it's like God just wants his people to know, you know, that he loves them. He's aware of them. And I said, you know, bring your, you know, her yes. husband was there. So I just laid hands on them, and I just started praying over them. And, uh, and I just said, you know, you guys, I just, I just feel like you guys are very sound in your relationship, that you guys are very solid, and you live in harmony. I feel like you've got wisdom beyond your years. And I said... I feel like God is going to use you to uh, be a mentor to younger couples, but I think he's also going to use you to teach older couples. And when those words left my mouth, it was like a bolt of lightning. Both of them went. I mean, it, I mean, it was like a jolt. And it was like a jolt of lightning hit them whenever I said that about the mentoring. And then the older couples and both of them like jolted. And it's like, whoa, I felt it. It's like my whole body just head to toe, even the soles of my feet, I was just tingling. It was just like Holy Spirit was all over them. So I just continued just to, you know, pray. And uh, and then after, and, and they didn't say anything, and I didn't ask. But I stepped back, and we kind of interacted a little bit. I thought, i got to ask these people. I walked up. I said, okay, I said, you got to tell me, what is the deal with you guys ministering to couples? I said, what has God, you know, that obviously rang a bell with you. And they said, one year ago, they went to Voice of the Apostles. And they said, we got that very word. And they said, now word for word, what you just said about the mentoring and the older couples, they said, word for word, we got that very same word six hours ago from somebody else at the conference. And God is just confirming what his plans were for him. And I, I, what, a, what an awesome way to end the conference. I was just so, and it wasn't about what I'd received. It was about what God had used me for. Because guys, man, 14 months ago, I was passing out drunk on my porch because I hated life. When he says all things are new, he means it. Yes. Because this is not me. No, it's not me. And then same with Kathy. Same with Kathy. And then tell them after Last story. Don't argue about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, she already you, she already mentioned this earlier that afterwards when we she wanted something to eat so we tried to find this burger joint and it was downtown and we when we parked finally found a parking spot we started walking to the burger joint. And the closer we got to the burger joint, there's all these people just standing outside, and there's bars, and this rock and roll, heavy metal music, and people outside. Every, every her, she's just like, she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, all these people, all these people, and we, we gotta pray for them, we gotta pray for them. They need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, because we're, um, we're like, we know we're, we're not, we're still kind of getting used to this, and this is, this is. New for us stepping out into this evangelism stuff. She's like, we need, we need John and Keith, and I'm like, no, wait a minute, we don't need John and Keith. We've got the same Holy Spirit living on the inside of us that John and Keith has. You know, we just gotta love on these people. That's all they need. They just need love. They need Jesus. You know. So I, 
How did we minister to first? Well, we, we came up onto this group, and we, we were trying to, it was just kind of awkward at first, and they were resistant, and then there was this one man that he had a, a t-shirt on, and it said, Hail Satan on it, and I thought, man, I'm going, I, I am going to go to this guy. I am so on him, because I mean, everybody, just like Heidi said, everybody has a story. Everybody has a story, and it's like, man, there's a reason why he's wearing that Hail Satan t-shirt. There's a reason, you know, he's been hurt, he's been wounded, you know, we're all made, God creates us, you know, with a Jesus-shaped hole, and he's, Jesus has never been, has never fit into his heart yet, so man, I, I had him pegged, but by the time we were done talking to the other people, I looked for him, he was gone, I was so upset, I wanted to talk to that guy, so. Pass this on to me. Um, so we walked, and we're trying to, we're just... Trying to hook out. Who do we? Who do you want us to talk to? Because we were des definitely going to be talking to somebody. Because we weren't leaving that place. Because <laughs> she's like, we got to pray for these people. So there were two girls standing um, on the building, up against the building, on their phones. You know how everybody's on their phones. So we walked up to them, walked by them, and started talking to them. And they were very, they were dressed very um, provocative. Um, there was a wedding party going on down the street. We weren't sure if they were from the wedding party or if they were, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but obviously, as we began talking to them, they were they were drunk. They smelled of alcohol. Um, young girls. They were young. I don't know. Twenties. Um, help me, Donna. Remember. I just told them that, I just said, I want you girls to know that Jesus loves you and he sees you as valuable. And I took out a $20 bill. I didn't have a $100 bill, but I took out a $20 bill and I used Josh's analogy about value and how you're, how valuable you are, even if you fold up that $20 bill. And, you know, I was like, how much is it worth? And they went, that is such a powerful testament or a powerful uh, object lesson and just wadded it up, threw it on the ground and stomped it. And I said, how much is that worth? And they're, they're like $20. I said... That's exactly how God sees you. It doesn't matter what you've been through. And they let us hold their hands and start praying for them. And that one girl was saying, remember the girl she got? She, like, you, she said, you can, can, you feel, can you feel it? She said, can you feel it? And we just, I'm not sure if she was meaning, can, because she was drunk, so I don't know if she was meaning, talking to their friend, can you feel it? Or if she was asking us, can you really feel God? You know, but, we're not exactly sure what God did with them, but we were able to pray with them, and their hearts were touched. I didn't notice this, but Donna said one girl was trying to close up her blouse before yeah. it was, you know, open. Yeah. And so, yes. you know, that's how, you know. It's kind of like when Adam, when Adam was, when God came into the garden, and Adam and Eve started covering themselves, it's because it's like, you know, there was a presence there. Because I did know, and, I, and she, she, I noticed her doing, and she was just holding it, just kind of, and I thought, oh God, bless her, bless her, bless her. And I just tried to tell them how valuable they were, how much they were loved. So then, one, one more encounter. On down the street we went because we were praying for people. We were doing this thing. There were we found another the burger joint finally a different one because the first one was closed by the time we got done praying. <laughs> so there were two more ladies. 